at number five, it's Mayhem, Domisterius Dom Satanas. This is one of those albums, together with Emperors in the Nightside Eclipse, this is really one of two albums where you'd say, if you don't own any other black metal, metal you should at least own this. Um, and in the Nightside Eclipse is a good album. It's not quite good enough to end up on this list, but it's good. But I personally like this one a lot more. Um, this is second wave black metal. This was 1994. Um, this is... <sighs> Mayhem seem to be at the epicenter of all the controversy and strange goings on that happened in Norway at that time. Um, because their, their old singer dead commit suicide. Um, Euronymous, the guitarist here, and the bassist here, Varg Vikens, who has his own project called Persum. Um, Varg Vikens Count Krishnak is also known. He murdered Euronymous. And that something that happened that was um I don't know all the details. And there's a lot of different stories going down going around about this. But you know, that was personal stuff between them that led to that. Um but yeah, he murdered Euronymous. And um that, together with church burnings, were the reason Varg Vikings went to prison. Um, but yeah, it's like a lot of those things that ended up in the news around the black metal scene in Norway. A lot of them seem to centre around this band Mayhem. Uh, and they are a band that's been marked by a tragedy in that way. Um, and this is an odd album in the sense that you've got Euronymous and Varg Vikings on it. They still released it, and then they were called, I think, from Euronymous's family to not, to you know, re, re-record the bass or something, so it wasn't Varg on there. But they chose to release it anyway, as is, and um, so it's strange in that you've got a murder victim and a murderer on the same album together. Um, the singer here, is a Hungarian guy called, I can't pronounce his name. But he has a very idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic weird vocal style um, that I actually really like. Uh, but yeah, this is second wave black metal. It's got it's, it's got the standard second wave black metal sound on it, um, but better production than a lot of other bands at the time. And I really like it. Um, it does that thing that black metal does that makes it special. Um, it's celebrating the primal scary wild aspect of nature and also kind of expressing very anti-christian sentiments through satanic uh, devil worshipy kind of lyrics um, and it, that dense kind of that weird dark obscure atmosphere and the dense uh, tremolo picking guitar work and blast beaty drums and um, it's good. It's a good album. <laughs> it's a very enjoyable album. Um, Freezing Moon, classic, wonderful track. Pagan Fear is really good. Life Eternal, another really good track. You know, it's, it's, it's great. The title track at the end, The Mysterious Dom Satanas, is the most diabolical music. Dr dramatically diabolical music. For me, it's it's wonderfully evil sounding <laughs> and they're like a dark ritual where you're trying to bring up Satan and uh, I love that bit where it goes unholy water <laughs> as well um, but yeah I love this album and um, it's my favourite black metal clearly because it's the highest black metal album on this list and uh, it's my favourite black metal album and it's an essential black metal album if you don't own any other black metal you should at least own this album is definitely how I feel <laughs> about this. So it is iconic. Uh, it's iconic. Number four. Very different. <laughs> Led Zeppelin IV, also known as Four Symbols. The untitled fourth album by Led Zeppelin, which is also known as Four Symbols, 
due to the four symbols representing the four different members of the band on it, um, because there's no actual title. But it sometimes gets called Led Zeppelin 4, because the first three albums were Led Zeppelin, and Led Zeppelin 2, Led Zeppelin 3, so the fourth one being untitled was obviously bound to be called Led Zeppelin 4 by some people. It's a great album, um, because it's one of those albums where there's not a bad song on it, where every song, not just there's not a bad song on it, but every song is really, really good, um, which is a rare thing. Um, Black Dog and Rock and Roll, just good hard rocking numbers. The Battle of Evermore, lovely acoustic, atmospheric, um, uh, spiritual sounding song about uh, the battle of, between good and evil, really. A um, bit Lord of the Rings influence as well, I think. Uh, Stairway to Heaven, complete classic. So uber famous that it probably doesn't need any introduction. Um, also a very spiritual song about finding God in nature, it seems to me, but people would have different interpretations. But um, beautiful, epic, majestic track. Um, Misty Mountain Hop, which I enjoy, I find it quite groovy. And it seems to be about meeting some hippies in a park and getting really stoned with them. But anyway, and but then it says something about I'm packing my bags for the Misty Mountains and have a Lord of the Rings re uh, uh, um, reference. But yeah, um, then we've got four sticks. Very interesting rhythmically. I believe it's in a weird time signature, which is probably why it sounds that way. Does that weird psychedelic thing and in the middle. It's just interesting. Um, going to California, another mellow track about a broken heart. Uh, I used to like singing that a lot when I had a broken heart. Um, and then when the levy breaks, them end with the pummeling kind of proto hip hop drum, <laughs> boom, dish, boom, 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 dish, and very bluesy with harmonica and everything. And it's all about you know when the levy breaks. You know your t hometown's going to get flooded, so you have to just pack up your bags and leave and stuff. Kind of very blues kind of concept and subject matter. But um, this is a brilliant album. Um, just brilliant. Every track on here is awesome and it's like a perfect album. It's the perfect Led Zeppelin album. So, <laughs> um, and it's, it's very rare to find a perfect album in this world. And yeah, that's why it's number four on the list. But there's still another three. Number three is Morbid Angel, Blessed Are The Sick. It's a death metal album made it this high up in the list. Um, but it's Morbid Angel. They have intelligent lyrics. They have very accomplished guitar work. And um, this album is one of those death metal albums, I guess like Obituary's Cause of Death, um, which was number six on this list. Um, like that, this is a death metal album which is not all speed. There's the slower, doomier passages as well. And I like that contrast of tempos in death metal. Um, it's very spiritually and in, and intellectually deep for me this album. Um, this actually was the first album, the first new album that I'd not already heard before that I got into when I got back into heavy metal after having gone off it for a while. Uh, I got back into it kind of late 2008, um, probably because, I don't know, who knows why you, you get into and out of certain types of music, but um, I rediscovered my metal roots, and by now I was definitely not a Christian. In fact, I was atheist uh, at this point in time. Um, so unlike the first time around, where I was still sort of Christian through most of that time, um, now I was like atheist or whatever. I was like, I can check out some of the satanic bands that I would have been frightened to check out the first time around. Um, and I love death metal. I knew death metal was a type of metal I enjoyed because, you know, this this time I wasn't, you know, I didn't know a lot of doom metal or black metal. That was stuff I would exp explore quite a lot further down the line. The styles of metal that I missed out on the first time around. Um, but death metal I knew was something I liked. So of course I go, oh, let's check out the satanic, more satanic death metal band, like Morbid Angel and Deicide. Deicide I never really took to. Just not as high quality as Morbid Angel, but Morbid Angel, wow! And uh, this album 
actually, I mean, this was a time as well where I thought I was a gay man, and I was also atheist. So I had a lot of kind of like Christianity tries to limit and control me in this way, but you know, fuck that, I'm this and all that. But something about this album, Blessed of the Sick, really articulated so much of how I felt about that sort of thing. Basically, I fell in love with the album, and it has remained a very important favourite metal album of mine ever since. Um, and you know, you've got Fall From Grace, where it's like, yeah, I am Lord, I take command. It's, about, it's this kind of rule in hell rather than serve in heaven kind of thing. You know? All the treasure of Sodom now belong to me, that's it. Fallen angels take my hand. And you've got a day of suffering, haven't you? With the whole Nazarene. Now I crown you king in pain, yes. Lord of Light, I will swarm against you now. Very anti-Christian lyrics. I love the lyrics in uh, Unholy Blasphemies, is it? Or Abomination? No, Unholy Blasphemies, where it says, Vomit upon the cross and burn the book of lies. Very, just great articulation of very anti-Christian sentiment. And, I mean, it's not so much satanic as the darker end of paganism. I mean, there's a mention of... Tiamat, the chaos uh, god of of ancient Babylon. There's, there's Cthulhu type stuff because it, yes, it mentions Cthulhu a lot and Tiamat a lot. It seems, but you know these are forces of chaos rather than evil. I think of them more as forces of chaos. Chaos is freedom. It's uh, not being restrained by orders and rules and laws. Um, and that's really where I feel is more coming from and it's you know like, come carry my curse to the ones who cause me disgust but the ancient ones I love the ancient ones but before I come to that let me talk about what happens before that we have an album full of very anti-christian very angrily anti-christian lyrics as I said vomit upon the cross and burn the book of lies um, <clears throat> Before are the final track, Ancient Ones, the final song anyway, Ancient Ones, we have this little instrumental, Desolate Ways. And it seems, I mean in a way it's just an acoustic little thing, but it seems sort of, it seems to speak of sadness to me. It seems deeply sad somehow, Desolate Ways. And, I mean it's called Desolate Ways. Um, if I feel like all the anger and rage, it just, we just, it gets swept away, just just temporarily, just to give us a little sign of the sadness that's always at the back of, of anger like that. And so I love that little thing for that reason. And then we launch into the Ancient Ones. Um, realm of Ancient Ones, Malignant Ones. But yeah, this is like, if you're, I mean, it continues from Abominations, which already said, come carry my curse to the ones who cause me disgust. It's like a continuation of that. It's like a prayer, a mantra almost, to like punish these Christians who have hurt me so much. Because <laughs> um, it's come forth, ancient ones, Tiamat, Cthulhu, rise, greet the cursed with your wrath, my enemies are yours. Tw twist their minds with your spells, crush their souls with your infernal grasp. It's, and of course, it's like, yeah, <laughs> raise the horns in blasphemy is another uh, line from that that people like. But, um, but yeah. And I like that thing, like saying forces of chaos and my enemies are yours. <laughs> I like that. Like. And uh, yeah, it's just morbid angel. They are a very literary and intelligent take on this kind of satanic extreme metal thing. Um, and uh, both musically and lyrically, I just think Blessed of the Sick is their most accomplished work. And that's why it's so high on this list. Um, and it's a very special album for me personally. Cause it, was very dear to my heart at a certain point in my life, and so it's remained dear to my heart since because of that. Number two, Rain in Blood by Slayer. Of course, this was going to be this high on the list. How could it not be? Um, classic extreme metal album. There would be no death metal without it, probably. Um, it is the fastest, most intense, and brutal thrash metal album. Um, and it was an influence on death metal and it's Slayer's most famous and popular album and for a reason it is so fast it is so brutal it is so intense and relentless and it's a classic um, of 
course, Angel of Death, very notorious uh, track about the Holocaust, about Auschwitz, uh, the, 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 the fucking concentration camps and all that, and then the uh, horrible experiment done by Joseph Mengel. Um, there are people, there were people at the time, and there probably still be people still who would say it's somehow glorifying or celebrating these atrocities. Of course, it's not. Um, <laughs> It does show an enormous sympathy for the victims, actually. It's just, it just holds no bars in, in portraying the grisly horribleness of the thing. <clears throat> and I mean, it does, you know, articulate what Nazis felt of themselves when it says things like defending the Aryan race, but, and inferior, no use to mankind. Um, but it shows enormous sympathy for the victims, and when it says, Pathetic, harmless victims left to die. Um, you know, and the big bit in the middle with all the kind of you know, pray for the end of your wide awake nightmare, yeah, and all that. And I like the line, given that the angel of death in the Bible, it was a nickname for Joseph Mengel, was angel of death, but the angel of death in the Bible passes over the Israelites when it's killing all the firstborn passes over the Israelites, leaves them alone right, this is in the Bible because they paint well, never mind they paint a cross with lamb's blood on the door and it passes over, but anyway, the point is that the God's chosen people, so the angel of death passes over them and just attacks the firstborn of the Egyptians um, and of course the Jews were one of the main groups, well, the only group, there were all sorts of groups of people, communists and, and gay gay people, you know, gay people, homosexuals and communists and gypsies, and there were all sorts of groups that were, you know, sent to concentration camps and stuff, but of course one of the biggest ones was the Jewish people. Um, I love the line in this song where it says, Angel of Death flying free. <laughs> Just to show the immensity and the atrocity of the situation here, uh, and sort of, I don't, know, I don't know. It just gives it that nice little twist somehow. Um, piece by piece, necrophobic, lo lovely, fast, short songs full of very gory lyrics. Um, Altars of sacrifice, altar of sacrifice, brilliant track. It cost us welcome to the realm of Satan in the middle of, <laughs> which is very enjoyable. Um, <laughs> and then Jesus saves, very fast track, very kind of ironic, you know, actually criticising Christianity but it's called Jesus Saves. Um, then they're not so much good tracks coming in saying Reborn, they're, they're a bit slayer by numbers. But then the last three tracks, oh, Epidemic, awesome track, brilliant lyrics, uh, but I mean some really quite clever, um, poetic, poetic, I don't know, very, very clever lyrics. Because um, this is obviously about a fatal disease. Um, Death machine infests my corpse to be. Just there's something gorgeous about that lyric somehow. Just in in the the structure of it. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's death machine infests my corpse to be. I just find that very poetically put somehow, um, and kind of clever. Um, and it's there's epidemic permanent disease and a, a fatal disease. Yes, permanent disease. <laughs> I just I find there are little bits in the lyrics which I find quite poetic and interestingly put <laughs> and kind of clever in a way. But um, then post mortem with the fucking brilliant riff. <laughs> it's just a riff tastic Slayer song. <laughs> It's just really good music for that one. And then there is Raining Blood, which is probably the best piece of music. Best, most intense bit of recorded sound ever, probably. Um, but Raining Blood's great, and then it gets like really fast. There's that bit where you think it's fast already, but then it goes boom, it goes even faster. <laughs> and then the bit, kind of a stop-start bit, where it goes da 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 and then you get the the... the Creepy like the guitar line from the beginning coming back, which is 
quite the thingy as well. And then I finally read a guy. I'm gonna have to read this guy. It's just very exciting songs all the way through. Um, but yeah, Rain and Blood. I mean, what can say about it? The fastest, most brutal thrash metal album ever. A complete classic from 1986. The, the most famous and important uh, Slayer album ever. And it's just a complete classic. I mean, everyone agrees it's a classic. There's, there's no doubt about it. Rain and Blood. Number two on the list. Number one. Number one, number one. Is Metallica. Ride the Lightning. My all-time favourite heavy metal album, my favourite Metallica album obviously, um, most people rave about Master of Puppets, I rave about Ride the Lightning, it's rawer, it's more thrashy, it's, but it still is a maturing of the band, to me it, it is as accomplished as Master of Puppets, and it did it first, <laughs> um, and it does it with more rawness and energy to it. Um, and it's another one of those albums where pretty much every track is amazing, apart from perhaps Escape, but even that is good. <laughs> um, Fight Fire with Fire, the opening track, very fast, very much about mutually assured destruction, I suppose, with nuclear weapons. Um, you're fighting fire with fire, and so we're all doomed, and the world is doomed, sort of a thing. Uh, Ride the Lightning, of course, about being executed on the electric chair another great metal song that grapples with fear of death you know I don't want to die um, brilliant lines in there like you know consciousness my only friend and stuff um, just really does tackle that fear of like in a minute I'm not gonna be conscious it's all gonna be over no more experience no more life ended just complete terror at the end um, and weirdly in the end turns out to be a dream, you know, waking my heart screams free from this lightning dream. It's like it was a dream of being uh, executed in an electric chair. A nightmare, you know. But shit, I mean, it really does deal with that fear, that terror of death. Um, for whom the bell tolls about war. Um, again, about fear of death on some level. Um, Brilliant cloud. Did it did it bong did it did it bong um great great beginning and great ending to <laughs> the kind of doom laden ending there so doom 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 bong the bells are back is it and it's like on the guitar and it's just <laughs> Fade to Black, great, uh, like the first Metallica ballad, if you want to call it that. Um, if Fade to Black is just, and it's about suicide, it's about suicidal feelings and depression again. And it's a beautiful song, and it's a very emotionally affecting song, and it, it, it's deep. Uh, Trapped Under Ice, one of the two tracks that is not really celebrated quite as much as the rest of the album of Trapped Under, Under Ice and Escape. Trapped Under Ice is the one that's actually kind of a bit of a hidden gem and a good track actually. Uh, it thrashes hard, it's about isolation, loneliness I think, or it, though it could of course literally be about being trapped under ice. <laughs> I always saw it as being about sh cri my crippling shyness when I was young, so you know. Um, and Escape, which is not as good as the rest of the album, but it's still kind of enjoyable in a kind of throwaway way. Uh, and then we have the fucking great tracks, Creeping Death and Call of Cthulhu. Creeping Death, uh, we were talking a little bit about Exodus and the Angel of Death before, weren't we? Creeping Death is also about the Angel of Death in the Bible. In fact, the Creeping Death is completely 100% about the Moses Exodus story. And it's very biblically accurate song. The most biblically accurate metal song ever. It is pretty much lifted from the Bible. I mean, it's not uh, <laughs> not lifted straight from the Bible, of course. It's put in their own words, but it it um, very straight stays very true to the actual Bible story, except perhaps for the chorus and that big chant of "Die by my hand, I creep across the land," <laughs> where they're getting a bit overly obsessed with, of course, the angel of death itself as a kind of mythical supernatural character. But um. 
but yeah, I mean, it's just all that, lots of little details that from the Bible, that perhaps the more casual person who's not so familiar with the Bible wouldn't know about. I, I peppered throughout the verses, like, you know, the whole land of Goshen is mentioned in there, and um, which is the land where the Israelites lived. Um, within Egypt, you know, the little pocket of Egypt they lived in. Um, and the lamb's blood painted door bit about the Passover thing. I mean, little details in the Bible that even a lot of Christians aren't necessarily aware of. So I find that quite impressive. As someone who was raised Christian and kind of being quite fond of reading stuff, especially stuff from old ancient sources, I, I actually quite liked reading the Bible a lot when I was young. So I'm actually more familiar with it than a lot of Christians. Uh, even though I'm not Christian anymore, um, but just the the historic hist history and religion geek in me kind of likes the fact that they've got all these little details in it, um, and yeah, obviously the play plays, you know, hail to fire, darkness, three days long, whatever, blood running down the Nile, but you know everyone knows those details, but. Uh, no, it's it's great track, and and then um, and plus it is fun to kind of go die, bye my man, die, die, <laughs> for me. It's fun, um, and uh, Call of Cthulhu, big long instrumental at the end of the album, so dramatic, so atmospheric, so exciting. So wonderful. Uh, words can't do it justice. You just have to listen to it. The Call of Cthulhu is amazing, and I love that track so much. It's the best instrumental in the history of rock. Never mind metal rock. Um, in the history of all popular music, the best instrumental ever. It is so dramatic. It is so captivating. It is so exciting to listen to. Just, words cannot do it justice. You have to listen to it. Um, Metallica, Ride the Lightning, it's like pretty much the perfect metal album. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, apart from perhaps Escape, but <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. Uh, <laughs> and now finally, before I leave you, this is a bit embarrassing. I realised during the course of doing this top 100 metal albums that I had missed off a very important album that's important to me personally, it may not be important to anyone else that it actually staggers my mind as to how in the hell I missed it off I guess it's the nature of doing a list of this nature that it's such a painstaking task, you have to kind of go oh, what are my favourite doom metal ba albums, what are my favourite death metal albums, what are my favourite thrash metal albums you have to break it down like that because there's just so much stuff and to decide and then do lists and then put the list together to make another list and then eventually you get your biggest lists together to make the, the big long list at the end and it, you all the way along trying to decide which one of these albums do I actually prefer listening to which one would I rather listen to which one do I like more and you know when you do an, a list like this it's going to be completely different the next time you do it because your attitudes change I mean I'm pretty sure at the higher levels of the list that's pretty stable because I, I you know I know what my go-to metal albums are that I just love every time and just think the world of and you sort of at the upper end of the list you, you know that that stuff's more stable but certainly further down the list you know every time you make the list it'll be completely different order um, and I guess it's the nature of the painstaking difficult uh, thing of making a list like this that some, some you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna end up missing something out that, but of all the things to miss out why did it have to be Cathedral's The Ethereal Mirror? One of the doom metal albums that I lift up as one of my favourite doom metal albums and that has massive significance to a certain point in my life where I was experiencing a certain thing and it has been one of the albums of recent years that I've gotten into of recent years. One of the albums I've gotten into in a big way since kind of returning to my metal roots from 2008 onwards um, that I have celebrated the most as like I love this album you know I was talking about My Dying Bride and Electric Wizard and how those albums demonstrate exactly what I love about doom metal I wanted to say Cathedral is the Ethereal Mirror as well because that's another one <laughs> and yet I got missed off the list um, I was talking about the idiosyncratic vocals of Skyclad or, or, or the Hungarian singer in Mayhem and how I like idi idiosyncratic eccentric vocals in, in metal bands uh, I want to talk about Lee Dorian and Cathedral and it's like, oh. anyway so, I'll talk about it now since I've
stupidly missed it off of the lift completely somehow. My instinct tells me that it's probably going to should be around the twenties in the list, ideally, which would of course push everything further down, further down, and would mean that Hella Waits uh, by Slayer wouldn't be on the list at all. But you know, um, but yeah, Cathedral's Ethereal Mirror. I, I love this album, and this is uh, nineteen ninety three. This came out. It's the second Cathedral album. It's Lee Dorian of Napalm Death fame uh, on vocals. Um, it's doom metal, um, kind of with some stoner-ish elements here and there, but it's still very much doom and not the stoner doom that they became later on. It's more like traditional doom with a little bit of stoner. Um, I don't like Midnight Mountain. That is the most stoner metal track on here, to be honest. I do like Ride, though. Uh, um, but I love songs like Enter the Worms and Ashes You Leave. This album, I got into it, I spoke about how in My Dying Bride I was in the midst of that big depression. Uh, I got into Cathedral's Ethereal Mirror at the very point in time where I was just about ready to start clawing my way out of that depression. I wasn't out of it yet, but I was like lifting my eyes up to the light, as it were, <laughs> in readiness to start crawling out of that pit of despair. Um, and this album fit with that mood completely. Um, seems to almost be acknowledged. It seems to be acknowledging the depression and misery I've been going through, but sort of making fun of it as well, uh, <laughs> which is why it was perfect for me at that time. You know, very gallows humour album in a way. But then I say that about some of it. Some of it is not humorous, and it's just expressing the pain uh, and the misery. But Enter the Worms is seems to be a, a track which amusingly exaggerates to the point of grotesquery uh, feelings of suicide because it talks about you know to think how pleasant your touch would be and stuff about limbs withering away and stuff um, it's got a line as well of uh, to my veiny old heart the worms will find the door into the weary bone into the core <laughs> the nature lover in me likes that way of expressing that as well it's like this suicide feeling, feelings i've had that when i you know your body will feed the worms you know <laughs> it's good for nature <laughs> um but yeah like taking suicidal feelings and then exaggerating to the bizarre and absurd and grotesque level. Um, I kind of appreciated that. <laughs> I was ready to start sort of making fun of myself a little bit for feeling that way. Um, as part of my recovery. Um, Grim Luxury is a bit like that as well. It takes, this seems to me about sexual desire and disillusion with love. Love, it says, love the bastard liar. In it. Um, disillusion with love and embracing of, of, of very kinky sexuality. The thing about kink is that that can be exaggerated to the grotesque and bizarre as well in terms of you know getting your kicks out of being like hurt in some way and it does it's like <laughs> bizarre quite sickening kind of exaggerated thing about it. i mean it's clearly like i say it's like twisted twisted lust on fire love the bastard liar is the main chorus lyric but you've got this about bones cracking and eyes popping or whatever and <laughs> mangled faces or this it's like okay what <laughs> but, but this is what i mean you exaggerate things for the bizarre grotesque you know, and ridiculous uh yeah but then you got ashes you leave very much uh good for how i felt about my wife and how i let her down and she's catholic or whatever there's this thing of you'll you go to heaven or go to hell. But it was more like you're normal. You'll find love and happiness again. Me, I don't know if I ever will because I've got very special, unusual needs. Uh, so, yeah, feeling a bit of the despair of that situation. It, it's definitely articulated in Ashes You Leave. And that ending is how I felt about the idea of leaving her and being single again. Because, like I said, you know, you ashes you leave as you ascend from me. I'm like, you'll be all right. You'll find someone else. You're normal. You want to have a family and have a like normal marriage situation. Me, I'm 
kinky, I'm queer, I'm trans, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever find love with anyone else. And that's how I felt, you know. So it's like, it got that bit at the end where it's like into darkness, into night, and the most despair-ridden kind of, well, I don't know how to explain that sort of thing when doom metal does that sort of thing, which is like this crushing kind of dramatic kind of thing, you know, here we go into like darkness and despair and, yeah. Um, I'm Phantasmagoria. Very slow, very heavy. So pummelingly heavy and, and slow and heavy, Phantasmagoria, with masses of low end in the sound, and I just fucking love that about it. And uh, on the lyrics and the thing, it just says um, ad lib into LSD. And indeed, the, the words are actually just talking about some wiggling jelly master thing. Uh, it's like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's Cathedral to Theorem Mirror, and I love it, so it really should have been on this list. How the hell did I miss that off? But anyway, a bit of bonus material for you when you're talking about this. It should probably go, I reckon, perhaps somewhere around the number of the beast. Metallica's Blackout album area of the list. So in the twenties somewhere is where it should have gone. I can't believe I missed out, to be honest, when I was making the list. Weird. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. This has been quite a long, long thing, this top 100 metal albums. And there's another one to come, the top 100 non-metal rock albums. But let's leave it there for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember, we're all different. We're all special. Snowflakes unite.